Okay, in that case, let's move on. So we learned about a regular GAN. We learned about least squares GAN, and these were giving us different distances, different divergences. There is another one, Wasser Strain GANs, and let's go through that. This is gonna be a little bit mathematical, and this is on the loss side of things. If you have a parametric family of densities, basically you're parameterizing your density function, then your life would be very easy. You would just use the likelihood. You can do maximum likelihood because now you know your P, you can use it to do maximum likelihood estimation and find the best thetas. You have some real examples. You have some parametric family of distributions, and then you can try to make this data more likely by updating your parameters. Basically, you take your data, you push it through your distribution, and then you want to maximize the likelihood or equivalently maximize the log of your likelihood. That's gonna give you your maximum likelihood estimation. And people love it because whenever you have a likelihood, things are gonna be very easy. But mathematically, if you write down the definition of the KL divergence and you get rid of some constants that don't depend on your parameter, the arc max of this objective is equal to the arc max of the KL divergence between two distributions. So whenever you are doing maximum likelihood, your distance is the KL divergence. If you have the luxury of having your distribution. And here, just for the sake of notation, PR is the real data density. But for GANs, what do we do? We don't have the luxury of having this parametric family of density, but what do we have? We can sample from a noise distribution. Let's say this is normal zero identity. You sample the vector you push it through a complex function. And that's gonna give you generated images, for instance. This is gonna give you a generated distribution. And here you cannot write down your density anymore. You can just generate samples from your de density. You don't know what your density is. Your density is gone. You don't have P anymore. You just have this G, which is a function. You sample from a simple distribution and then push it through some complex function, which is parameterized by some neural network. And then that's gonna give you generated images or generated text, whatever. And this could have complex distribution. And usually you put a distance between the real data and the generated. And remember, there is no P of theta anymore here. It's just an abstract object. It doesn't exist. You cannot write its formula, it just doesn't exist. You can just sample from it. X, what is X? X could be the space of images. So it could be any compact metric space, such as the space of images. And these are normalized. So your pixels have values between zero and one. Don't worry about this. This is just a set of Borel subsets of X. Borel subsets, you can create them by countable unions and intersections of open sets or intervals. But don't worry about it. Sigma is not a summation. This is just a set of all of the subsets of X. And you need it to be Borel because you want to put a measure on it. So here you need to know your real analysis, but even if you don't that, don't, don't, worry, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You can define different uh, measures, different distances. You can define a total variation distance. You take a set A in this uh, set of subsets of X. We can look at the probability of the real. We can look at the probability of the generated. You can compare the distance, you take the supremum, and that's gonna give you a total variation distance. That's gonna give you a distance. You can do KL divergence, that's another distance, and that's just a definition of KL divergence. And mu is some measure, that's why you needed this to be a Borel set, but don't worry about it. This is just for the math to work. So you can have the KL divergence as your divergence. This was your total variation distance, KL divergence. You can have the jensen shannon you can have the chi-squared Pearson divergence, or you can have this divergence, the earth mover distance, or the Wass Wasserstein one. So what is, it, what is this uh, divergence or distance telling us? If you have a distribution of your real and you have a distribution of your generated images, this uh, distance is telling you what is the minimum cost for you to transfer distribution R to distribution G. You can think of the distributions in terms of a pile of dirt. The distribution PG is another pile of dirt. How much would it cost you to 
carry the pile of dirt that is real to the pile of dirt that is generated. And that's going to give you a distance. And what is the cost here? It depends on the distance between the entries, how much distance you're going, how much distance you're transferring, times there's an integral here with respect to these probabilities. Basically, how much mass are you transferring? So it depends on how much mass you're transferring. At the same time, it depends on the distance that you're transferring. And that's going to give you them, this is the cost. The infimum is similar to minimum. That's going to give you the minimum cost. And you are asking what is pi? Pi is the set of all joint distributions. So you're going to have a joint distribution in your space of X and Y. These are all of the joint distributions with a condition that if you integrate out Y, you're going to end up with PR. So the marginal distribution is PR. If you integrate out X, that's going to give you P of J. So this capital pi is the set of all such marginals, all such distributions whose marginals are PR and PG. So there is a catch here. You cannot work with this objective function. You cannot differentiate it. You cannot compute it. It's not easy. And that's the topic of next session. How do you actually make it useful in practice? How do you actually make it differentiable and computable? I think I'm one minute over time. For those of you who want to leave, you can leave. And for those of you who want to stay and ask questions, I'll be around. I have a quick question. Sure. When we're coding um, this expectation value, I'm wondering, is it actually a mean when we're doing like actual coding? How does it look like? Yeah, what you're asking is a very good question. That one I need to answer next session. It's, this objective function is not computable, okay? You don't know what is the set of all distributions, whose marginals are that. You have a lot of freedom in the choice of pi. That one I'm going to answer next session. So for now, this is just a definition of the Wasserstein one uh, distance. Okay? Okay. Makes sense. So that one I'm going to answer next session. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, sure.